Welcome everybody to a new episode of Rafa's Toy Studio, the place where I get to talk about those toys that everyone should check out. And today is a very, very exciting episode, specifically focused on the surrealistic, horrifyingly real Alien franchise. Now, when I talk about sci-fi, there's a couple movies that stand out. E.T., The Extraterrestrial, um, Short Circuit really um, influenced me. Casper's more fantasy, but I'll, I'll count that as science fiction. Um, Terminator. But one of those films that, that really influenced my imagination was Ridley Scott's Alien. Um, when it came out in 1979, it was, it was one of those films that masterfully blended imaginative sci-fi and visceral horror. It's aesthetically unique with the slow and pervasive space and special effects that's very um, Kubrick. And also filled with sexual symbolism and metaphor, inspired by pulp horror and even the likeness of, you know, H.P. Lovecraft. These toys really showcase the the death-defying um, realism, detail, and articulation of this terrifying and, you know, well-loved and expanded universe of the Alien franchise. And I think that's really, really awesome to, to get to share today. So again, today I'm going to share my NECA Real Toys Alien Series action figures. When I was a kid, I was horrified, horrified by these fucking creatures. Um, you know, watching Alien or Aliens, them coming at me, you know, is the stuff of nightmares. Which is perfect, um, specifically when Dan O'Bannon and Ronald Schussett you know, they, they sat down and they started writing the story, um, which later um, Ridley Scott directed. But there's there's always something very interesting and something very primal and disturbing about these these disgustingly, I don't, I don't want to say be well, beautiful, yeah, these surrealistic, dark um, alien creatures, you know, the xenomorphs that we've, you know, grown to, to understand in popular culture. But, you know, designed by Swiss surrealist H.R. Geiger, um, came from his collection of paintings, the the Necronomicon. It it's insane that these things was well, that this thing was able to be created, and it's it, it just boggles my mind that a creature so terrifyingly visceral, you know, can stay within you know popular culture, zeitgeist, and um. The, the the inner workings of our minds so so real and so um so intensely and it's been brought in plastic form i mean again considering that this is a toy blog i don't want to bore you with some of the the fact findings of any of these things but i think it's very important to understand how this this creature you know came to life you know they created it for the film for this horrifying movie but at the same time now it became so culturally important then now, you know, you can take it home. You can have a collection of different alien figures, whether it's the dog alien from Alien 3, whether it's this blown up alien right there, you know, going straight to hell, or even the warrior aliens from Aliens, you know, or Big Chap himself from the original. This isn't my Big Chap. This is just the, you know, alien drone that I have, you know. But it it shows that you can take these things home and how the amount of detail brought into these creatures allows us to really enjoy and forever relive these moments. I know for me personally, you know, when I go into my room and I see these things or I'm going to do a, a toy um, a toy photography session, it's it's seeing these things. They, they look so real that sometimes like, wow, look at the amount of detail, the amount of painstakingly detail someone put in to make this beautiful thing a reality. And I mean, looking online, you know, you can see... That these xenomorphs, you know, they're endor, endoparasitoid, um, extraterrestrial, anthropodal species, you know, having an exoskeleton segmented body parts with jointed appendages, which you can see here, you know, kind of like a crustacean or a scorpion. Um, endo, they come from within, they're internal. Parasitoid, you know, they're a parasitic life form that ultimately sterilizes and kills, sometimes even, you know, consumes the host, you know, they're parasites, specifically with the face hugger to then, you know, chest burster to one of these horrifying monstrosities. And I mean, they're extraterrestrial. These are the ultimate just, you know, oh no, they're not from Earth. They're very alien. They're very foreign. Just the simple 
simple title of Alien showcases that, you know, they're not from here. You see them and you have that culture shock of just like, what am I looking at? And you can't move. And that's why, you know, the crew of the Nostromos had such a hard time fighting this thing. Besides the fact, you know, that it had acid blood. It was part of a hive mind. It was predatory, hostile and violent with sharp claws and intense inner jaws, that, you know, could just burst right through your head. But these things didn't need technology. They just wanted to continue the species and wipe out all other life forms. And it's not insidious necessarily, it's just part of their design, which I think is really cool. It's this this horrifying, almost like an, a wasp type uh, ant type insect or, you know, serpent, the dragon, that it just, it won't stop. And if it's after you, it's going to kill you. Um, what I also really like about this is, you know, with H.R. Geiger, you know, coming from his, his, his dark, fantastic realms of the surrealistic art form it's very sexual it has a lot of rape connotations it's very phallic i mean just looking at the build of this horrifying creature you know and when they were talking about making alien you know o'bannon and Shusev talked about it being a movie about alien interspecies rape you know having this thing come in and it impregnates you and then you know it creates this new alien it's elongated you know cylindrical um phallic like just skull it's it's horrifying and not having any eyes you never know if it's looking at you and that in itself is very unsettling and then at the same time with its almost mechanical but still organic you know monochromatic just build of a thing if this thing was in real life you know we'd all be in danger because we what can we do they wouldn't stop they you know they destroy us and i just think it's very important to know that while playing with these toys because they are very articulate they are very you know centered in the real and the amount that thank you NECA thank you NECA for creating these toys that we can take home and enjoy and whether it's the video game variant battle damage variant or just from the films themselves you know we know that by bringing them in Ripley or whoever is going to see them is going to have a very hard time trying to fight them because they're you know they're after you they're gonna get you and that's terrifying no one in space can hear you fucking scream. Well, that's too bad. Alien 1979 is the standard of terror. Um, it's imaginative. It's tense. It's groundbreaking. Freudian. It's well-paced horror that builds so much tension that you're just scared the entire time. And visually, it's just a beautiful, beautiful movie. Um, with Alien 1, it's aesthetically unique. I mean, just looking at some of these figures... Um, NECA and Real Toys, god damn, thank you so much for continuing to make these amazing likenesses of these wonderful toys that really affect um, popular culture. I mean, first of all, here, specifically talking about Alien 1, I've got the NECA Real Toys Alien Series 4 Ripley in her jumpsuit, right? Um, specifically in the Nostromo jumpsuit with her flamethrower and Jonesy the cat right so it comes with all these different accessories and of course i don't have the big chap um xenomorph that's famous in the movie um you know with that translucent skull looking thing and it's in its um elongated penis head but the closest alien that i have to that because i have a lot of warrior aliens is probably this one um i mean he's got the right head mold specifically um yeah, with his body, you know, he's got that whole appendage looking gross, metallic, slimy, insect like look. But, you know, he doesn't have any of the ridges that he has on top of his head that a lot of the warrior aliens have in later installments, especially in Aliens 2. Um, this specific alien I got from the NECA Alien vs. Predator exclusive action figure 2 pack. He came with a Predator, uh, but because this isn't the Predator episode, I'm just going to show off the alien. But this is the closest one that I have to, you know, the alien drone that, you know, hitches a ride on the Nostromo. So, um, ultimately bringing these two together, I mean, iconic figures from the movie themselves. You know, this looks just like Sigourney Weaver. This Ellen Ripley is awesome, you know, with the whole late 70s haircut. Um, ready to kick ass, you know, that strong female lead that wasn't afraid. You know, psh, take that alien. She... She handled the situation as best as she could, you know, and she managed to save her cat, which is something else that's very, very important. Building from these figures, you can really, really see a lot of the attention to detail that NECA always brings into them. The jumpsuit's really nice with all the ridges. It's a good paint job. Even the detail in the patchings 
And, I mean, the shoes, you know, locating that kind of grungy, cyberpunk look in space. Um, but the likeness to Sigourney Weaver, like I said, is completely phenomenal. I mean, this looks just like Ellen Ripley. And the likeness is what's very important because, you know, when you have her out there doing her own thing in space, you know, taking on these xenomorphs, it, it, it really shows in her face. And specifically with this xenomorph, like I said before, not like some of the other figures that I have, you know, this one looking more like the prototype one from the very first film, you know, this alien, it, it's got the whole endopomorphic, nasty-ass, metallic, rustic, black look, which makes it so cool to begin with. So, very articulate, standing at 7 inches tall. It's a pretty big toy, especially com compared to, you know, Ripley. So, that's showcased there. But I got these two toys here with, again, Jonesy. And for those of you that believe that Jonesy and the alien were in cahoots or that the alien was just a misunderstood creature that was just trying to save the cat from the crew I don't know what movie you were watching if you don't know what I'm talking about just look up Jonesy the cat and Big Chap on the internet and you'll see some pretty ridiculous fan theories but hey the imagination goes wild so if you want to pick up these toys and make it seem that that was actually what happened you know what hell yeah do that because aliens can be friends with cats i guess you know another one with interspecies friendships now with aliens 2 or as it's so masterfully called aliens plural um this movie in 1986 you know james cameron took ridley scott's awesome story and instead of you know continuing that whole awesome combination of horror and sci-fi that was done so masterfully well in this case he took those characters took that franchise and added to it by creating this iconic sequel with a greater span and a non-stop onslaught of alien carnage that you know like they say it can't stop won't stop ellen here you know uh she changes ripley she's not the same person she was yeah she killed the first alien but now she's ready to you know kill some more aliens specifically going back to the planet where she found the derelict ship and now getting ready to you know lead a whole expedition of space marines to go and fight these new these aliens that basically took over um the the, the terraforming um station and that's just cool storytelling because james cameron ultimately added to the film in the sense of okay it's not it's a different type of scary it's a different type of terror whereas the first movie is dealing more with oh what's going on the tension is built not anything can be around the corner it's gonna get you it's gonna get you in this movie it's a much more about oh here come aliens oh shit there's a lot of aliens oh god look more aliens oh they don't stop coming and so it's a much more relentless kind of like some people like resident evil 4 or resident evil the original because it was kind of like scary and because you never knew what was going to come whereas in resident evil 5 it's not the same kind of horror, you know, it's not survival horror this time, you know, it's just onslaughts of enemies that keep coming at you, and you gotta stop them. But, ultimately, with Aliens, I have a lot of these toys, specifically starting off with uh, with Alan Ripley as her evolution continues. Here, I got the NECA Real Toys Aliens Series 5, Lieutenant Ellen Ripley, you know, when she's hanging out with the Space Marines, coming with her makeshift flamethrower and pulse rifle. Right here, she's just holding a pulse rifle. And again, the likeness of Sigourney Weaver is pretty unreal. It's pretty legit, specifically looking into her. You know, the hair's gotten a little bit crazier. But again, that's because, you know, she's been asleep for a long time and she wakes up many, many years later from the first movie. But, you know, showcasing that she's, she's not fucking around anymore. Here we got all of the different ammunition she needs for her guns. Again, great detail in the pants and the ridges. She's got her watch. And again, you know, cool 80s-like shoes in space. I like how the 80s aesthetic didn't change in the far reaches of outer space, which I think is pretty cool. But, you know, this Sigourney Weaver, Ellen Ripley, also pretty detailed, pretty cool. The iconic, you know, I'm going to take on the, the alien queen, which I think is pretty, pretty sick within itself. And ultimately, I don't really have alien two aliens but I, these do technically count these are part of the NECA real toys aliens genocide series 5 black xenomorph warrior alien seven inch action figures so these came in their pretty cool packaging you know um again being showcased in the sense of these aliens looking very different from the original specifically you know more ridges in the head Specifically, you know, looking much more ready to attack, a lot shinier, more monochromatic, 
um, their tails, everything about them aesthetically looks more dangerous. They're more scaly. They have more, um, you know, their exoskeletons are pretty more, pretty much more intense, and they're ready just to kill whoever comes at them. So these aliens are pretty legit, and I really, really like them. It, the, the detail is is unreal. It's 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 something that other toys should really strive for, and that's what or it's so cool about these toys is they look disgustingly, hauntingly real, and they can just jump at you at any moment, you know? Keeping with aliens, I've also got these pretty sweet um, NECA Real Toys Aliens Helmeted Corporal Dwayne Hicks versus Battle Damaged Warrior Alien Blue 2-Pack. Again, these two came together, and from what you can see specifically, look at this alien, you know, this has been an alien that's been shotgunned straight to the depths of hell. Its inner mouth is, is being exploded, all that acid is going to get on Michael Bean, and he's going to die. He has to be careful. But again, this is battle damage, alien, hella dead. But specifically looking at the Michael um, Bean, um, Corporal Dwayne Hicks, here, you know, the attention detail, you know, that's Kyle Reese right there from the Terminator. He's ready to kill some aliens in space. This is the ultimate space marine, ready to help Ellen Ripley and all of the things that she has to do. Um, he's very aggressive. He comes with a couple different guns. Here he's showcasing his shotgun um, but again very detailed toy very articulate what was really impressive about these figures besides how cool the aliens look and just the paint is also the paint in in the and the in the background characters I mean you can't have the alien franchise because as cool as the aliens look it's it's also important that the background characters specifically their foes the humans also look just as detailed all the color in the camo pants as well as the boots and, you know, the chest plate, the helmet, even in the face. I mean, he, he looks like he's terrified. Here they come. They're going to get you. Very, very well detailed. But you never know what's going to get you. And continuing with my Alien 2 figures, I also got the NECA Real Toys Alien Series 5 Bishop Queen Attack. So this isn't normal Bishop. This is the Bishop that gets torn apart by the Alien Queen in all of his amazing likeness to Lance Harrison, but also in all that milky robotic innards galore. Just look at that. Look at that nasty ass detail. You fucking robot. He's seen some better days. But the detail is very impressive. I mean, Bishop is one of those characters that I really enjoyed in the movie, um, showcasing those laws specifically of robotics. He he was ultimately there. He, he was the perfect person to be there. And he threw himself out there to really help these humans, which I thought was very admirable. And what did he get in, in, in charge of that? He ended up getting chopped in half. But regardless, very detailed, very cool. Um, looks just like Bishop in his final, like, oh, no, what happened? Very, 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 very cool. Um, those eyes. Just those eyes. He's, he's seen some shit. And coming with this toy, um, we also got specifically... The alien egg with cool ass face hugger. You know, the open xenomorph egg and its leathery goodness, you know, the raunchy face hugger. I mean, just look at that detail right there. It's gross as hell. Um, with the bendable tail, which is kind of one of the one of the better parts, you know, it comes out, it's ready to get you. You never know what's coming at you. And these little fuckers were really scary because you never knew when they were gonna attack. You know, put your hands in the eggs, oh no, what's coming what's going on? What's coming? Here he comes. He's got, but he's a robot, so he can't really hurt him. When David Fincher showed up and he started giving us Alien 3, which I think was pretty cool, um, we had a whole new, again, addition to the whole Alien franchise. Now we have Ellen Ripley, again, put into an impossible situation. Now she's stuck at an all-male prison. Alien has fucked everything up. No Newt. No Bishop. No anybody. Hicks is gone. Just her, and now in all of her sadness. Um, this is the NECA Real Toys Alien 3 Series 8 Ellen Ripley in the Fiorina 161 prison uniform. You know, she came with different arms um, and, a, and a removable jacket, but this is the iconic look from the movie with her awesome shaved head and all. Um, again, great likeness to Ellen Ripley. And something about always carrying fire-based weapons against these fucking monsters. Again, she's got that cool-ass um, torch that they use in the film. Um, but specifically, this Ripley is really cool. Very articulate, very movable. Again, great detail with her palette of nasty-ass greens and browns. The combat boots are a sick touch. And like I said, the attention to detail to the face is very important. 
Alien, this figure, like an Alien 3, Ripley, you know, all hope is gone. Again, thrust into another situation where everything just sucks. I get, I get you, Ripley. I'm so sorry for all the things that you had to fucking go through in these movies. Um, but I really picked up, this is a recent edition. I really enjoy this toy. Um, really brings out some of the cooler parts from the Alien 3 um, series. Again, some people didn't like this film, and you know, rightfully so. There were some elements that were different, but I appreciate that David Fincher tried something different, and this f film felt much more bleak in so many different respects. Um, I also picked up the alien here, the dog alien from the movie. Um, this one's kind of um, tied up. Thank you, Steven, for tying up my alien. I was using them for toy pictures earlier, and I never got rid. Of, I never changed it, but this alien right here, he's seen some shit. Here we go. That's much better. Okay, so this is the dog alien from Alien 3. Again, kind of like with the other xenomorphs. Um, this one, much more brown, um, which is the color of this specific animal. Now, the only gripe I have with this toy is he's supposed to be on all fours because he came from a dog. But you can't really move his head. Like, you'd think, like, his head and neck could be able to go up here so it can kind of look at you this way. But it, it, it can't. It's, it's constantly looking down. So, I mean, yeah, it might be coming at you, but... It can't really see you, so I guess you can kind of escape. And I mean, Ellen being so cool, as she comes, just kind of kick him and show him who's boss. But again, part of the Series 8, Alien 3, here we got the dog alien. And with that, the other dog alien I have is this really cool one too that I picked up kind of a while ago. A lot bigger, one of the bigger alien figures um, that's a much more stylistic representation. This is the NECA Real Toys classic video game, Dog Alien from Alien 3, which is a tribute figure to the 8-bit alien video game in 1992. This one, when you stand him all the way up, he's like 10 inches tall. Like, look at that. Look at that fucking difference. I mean, if that monster came at you... You'd, you'd stand no, no chance. I mean, if a Xenomorph came at you, you still wouldn't stand any chance, but at least this toy has it all. Um, it has a much more bendable tail, which is really cool. So, I mean, you could do almost anything with this specific tail. Um, but part of that also, it comes with the two-tone blue and rustic orange paint for a much more stylized video game look. And I think that's pretty cool. All of these toys, you know, with NECA kind of bringing out and redesigning these toys, rebranding them. They come out in like these window packaging things. So that's kind of another really cool thing about this specific toy. But again, I got for Aliens 3, I got my shaved Ellen. And then here I got two dog aliens. One from the video game, one from the movie. And again, with the dog alien, look at that detail inside the phallic head. That's pretty cool. Translucent. Ready to fight. And so those are my NECA Real Toys alien series you know action figures i want to buy more you know having one alien isn't enough you know you want to have an army of them and that's the good thing about these xenomorphs is you can continue to purchase them you can continue to add to your collection and there's so many different casts of them you know whether it's a drone warrior big chap himself which i'll eventually pick up or an alien queen that's very deluxe and awesome looking you know i i'm always adding to my collection so i will be continuing to purchase these toys because they're really cool and they're they're, they're really fun to play with that's the end of the day you know you can recreate all of the the scenes and i know i sound like a broken record at times but that's because you know if you say something again and again you repeat something is probably important and i i and for me personally that's what it is you you realize that a movie that you know so significantly you know added to your imagination as a kid to who you are now you know the fantastic possibilities of interstellar you know travel as well as you know seeing these horrifyingly um terrifying aliens in real life that would be something that you know i couldn't handle i'd have a heart attack but in the safety of my own home i can purchase them i can recreate scenes i can have really blast them straight to hell and i think that that in itself is pretty cool to say so you know whether you're a big fan of alien or not please check out these action figures um if you've never seen the movies please try them out i know they're very overhyped but you know try watching it for what for its time it was very very groundbreaking you know it's the standard of what good sci-fi should be and it continues to be um alien and aliens are two very different films so is the third one and resurrection though many people will tell you not to watch it i think you should you know check it out and then go check out the AV avp movies alien vs predator is pretty cool but you know play these toys and always remember to enjoy the plastic <laughs>